Mikhail Gorbachev, who was lauded in the West as the man who helped bring down the Berlin Wall and end the Cold War without bloodshed, but was widely despised at home, has died, Russian news agencies reported. He was 91. After decades of Cold War tension and confrontation, Gorbachev, the last Soviet president with a distinctive port wine birthmark on his head, broke with the past. He helped to remove the Iron Curtain that had divided Europe and bring about the reunification of Germany. He struck nuclear arms deals with the United States and brought the Soviet Union closer to the West than at any point since World War II. Gorbachev struck up a rapport with the West and with Ronald Reagan, the hawkish US president who had called the Soviet Union the evil empire. Together they negotiated a landmark deal in 1987 to scrap intermediate range nuclear missiles. France has accused Moscow of using energy supplies as a weapon of war. Tuesday's allegation comes as Russia's Gazprom reduced deliveries to one of France's main utilities. The major pipeline, the main conduit for Russian gas into Europe, has become a flashpoint in the economic war between Moscow and Brussels. The Kremlin said Tuesday that technological problems caused by Western sanctions were the only things standing in the way of supplying gas through Nord Stream 1. But France's energy transition minister said Tuesday that very clearly Russia was using gas as a weapon of war. The minister was speaking after French utility Engie said it would receive less gas from Gazprom from Tuesday due to an unspecified contractual dispute. Taipei has fired warning shots at Chinese drones that buzzed at a tiny offshore island. The firing happened shortly after the Taiwanese president ordered the military to take strong countermeasures against provocations. This is the first time warning shots have been fired in such an incident, especially at a period of heightened tensions between China and Taiwan. President Tsai Ing-wen is on a visit to an air and naval base on the Penghu Islands in the Taiwan Straits. She praised the armed forces for their efforts to protect Taiwan and condemned Beijing for its recent military drills. The Iranian military vessel had the American drone in its clutches, latching on and towing it through the waters of the Arabian Gulf. The captured sea drone Explorer is an unarmed, unmanned vessel equipped with sensors, radar and cameras to collect data. And once the U.S. Navy saw Iran was trying to steal it, their response was quick. The USS Thunderbolt, you can see it here, was operating nearby and quickly moved in, approaching the Iranian ship, nearly pulling up alongside it. The standoff lasted hours until the Iranians finally disconnected the tow line, releasing the drone. The first shipment of wheat from Ukraine to Africa has arrived on the continent. Ukraine and Russia are, of course, the world's biggest exporters of grain, but shipments stopped following Russia's invasion back in February. A recent agreement between the two countries, mediated by the UN and Turkey, means around 50 ships have been allowed to take stocks from Ukraine. The MV Brave Commando, which is now docked in Djibouti, is carrying an aid shipment bound for Ethiopia, where drought and conflict affect over 20 million people. Thank <laughs> you. 
the National Movement for the Liberation of Azawad, which is one of the main armed groups operating in northern Mali, has reaffirmed its commitment to a merger of the armed groups of ex-rebels who signed a peace agreement in Bamako in 2015. The movement made the declaration at a meeting held in Kidal, in the north of the country. This latest move intends to bring a merger into a single unit with a common political objective. This Congress comes days after announcement by the Malian authorities to integrate over 26,000 ex rebels into the National Army. The strike was necessary to protect and defend U.S. personnel in Syria, uh, which have been the targets of several recent attacks by Iran-backed uh, uh, militia groups.